For more than a decade, we as 3D artists became familiar with using PBR materials and physically based rendering. But in the early days, it was hard and time consuming to get something that looks realistic, especially compared to what we can do today. And 3D artists used quote unquote primitive tools like Photoshop to create materials. The thing is, we could have had this much earlier. I mean, it was possible to have a software such as Substance Painter earlier, but it wouldn't be as great without PBR materials, which is now the standard in all 3D software and game engines. If you didn't know, the PBR technology was there for decades, but only in theory. That's why it needed something or someone to bring it to reality so it can be used by real people aka 3D artists to make real things like movies, animations, video games, and so on. So who is this guy who brought physically based rendering or PBR technology to practical use? And what is the role of Pixar in all of this? And how this change started taking place in the industry with all major 3D software and game engines in addition to the companies involved in creating video games and movies. PBR or physically based rendering and the concepts underlying PBR have gradually evolved over time. A lot of us may think it is a new concept, but the real work or the foundation of it came with significant developments that occurred in the early 21st century. If you want some real exact moments when the PBR concept was created, I would say it wasn't marked by a single introduction date, but was rather a gradual shift as the technology and the understanding of physically based lighting models improved. What we are seeing today in the CG industry is actually the application of theories that have been developed a long time ago at least when it comes to their foundation. So, to give you a better idea, the foundational principles of PBR have been part of academic and research discussions since the 90s and 80s, with various researchers contributing to the theories behind physically accurate rendering, which is the topic of this video. However, the practical application of PBR in real-time rendering, particularly in video games and interactive media, started to gain significant traction in the late 2000s and early 2010s. And I believe one of the most important stages in the adoption of PBR was when Disney introduced its principled BRDF model, short for Bidirectional Reflectance Distribution Function, with the release of their 2012 paper, authored by Brent Burley, entitled Physically Based Shading at Disney. This model aimed to standardize the way materials are rendered making it easier for artists like me and you to achieve realistic results without understanding the physics behind light and material interactions. To be honest, you don't have to understand how PBR works to use it, which means these guys did their work successfully. So now, this approach has been highly influential in both film and video game industries. Before we continue, do you want to create environments like these? If the answer is yes, then this course by Max Hay is the perfect pick for you. Throughout this training, you will learn how to build each of these environments from scratch, picking up along the way important concepts like composition, modeling, lighting, rendering, and so on. You can also check some of the stuff people created following the course. Another bonus for choosing this course is getting the full fantasy slash sci-fi asset pass, which is fantastic. And to check it out, you can click the link in the description down below. I would say this paper is particularly interesting because it represents a convergence of theoretical physics to the practical application in computer graphics. As I said before, there were a lot of theories when it comes to this artistic application, which led to making advanced rendering techniques more accessible and standardized for artists and animators. One of the most compelling aspects of this paper is its approach to complex shading models. Before this publication, achieving realistic materials in digital rendering required a deep understanding of physical lighting models and complex shading programming, which you are probably not interested in. And before PBR maps became the standard, if you remember the old days, Texrin relied on primitive techniques for creating all the different maps manually in software such as Photoshop mainly. 
So 3D artists would create maps such as diffuse maps or basic color textures, specular maps, bump, normals and so on to finally achieve a final material. So 3D artists had to manually adjust those maps to achieve the desired effects, focusing on the visual outcome rather than the physically accurate interactions between light and materials. But I would say this approach also required a deep understanding of how different textures would interact with other various lighting conditions to create realistic or stylized visuals. I personally created materials for 3D assets using this method back in the day, and I can tell you this is not nearly as easy or effective as using PBR software, like the ones we have today such as Substance Painter. So what Disney principled BRDF did is it distilled this complexity into a more artist-friendly set of parameters that could be easily manipulated to achieve a wide range of materials, from metallic surfaces to human skin without sacrificing the physical accuracy of their appearance under different lighting conditions. The paper's impact on the industry stems from its practical applications in the film industry. Actually, it was developed during the making of Disney's Racket Ralph, and it has since been used in numerous films, providing its utility in creating visually stunning and believable digital environments that we can see these days. The thing is, by providing a standardized and physically based shading model, it allowed for greater consistency in the appearance of materials across different lighting environments, without talking about how easy it is. And from what I can see, this consistency is crucial in the creation of animated films, where characters and objects often move through various lighting conditions, so you want everything to be as you expect it to be. And the good news is that the influence of Disney principled BRDF extended beyond Disney Animation Studios and has been adopted by other animation studios and video game developers. In fact, it became, I would say, something necessary overnight. So these PBR practices became essential in the industry, creating kind of, I would say, a more unified approach for creating materials and rendering. For example, in the video game industry, one of the early adapters of PBR was the game Metal Gear Solid V, The Phantom Pain, which started development in the late 2000s and was released in 2015. And by implementing PBR, Metal Gear Solid V not only enhanced the visual appeal of its big open world environment, but also set a new standard for how light and materials interact in real-time rendering creating more immersive and believable world for the players that we all seen and it looks just amazing. And I think the significance of this game adopting PBR technology goes beyond the game itself, because most importantly, it served as a practical demonstration of the benefits of using PBR materials and lighting in real time, as an interactive context showcasing the potential of nuanced lighting and material effects that could adapt dynamically to the game's environments, and moving beyond the limitations of earlier techniques to achieve a more consistent and realistic visual experience. And let me tell you, everyone appreciates this because it is the norm and it just makes everything look amazing. Also, Batman Arkham Knight that came in 2015 was also a nice and great demonstration of how PBR technology can make video games look way better. Like look at these environments, they look just fantastic. On the other hand, the launch of Unreal Engine 4 in 2014 and Unity 5 in 2015 I think marked a pivotal moment for PBR when it comes to the game development community. These engines integrated PBR into their core rendering capabilities, allowing access to sophisticated rendering techniques for a wide array of developers and artists like me and you. Unreal Engine 4 and Unity 5, like they should, provided comprehensive tools and workflows designed around the principles of PBR, making it easier for developers and creators to provide content that adheres to the physical properties of light and materials. And the thing is, they didn't even have an option, because the industry was changing in real time, and this support was extended from AAA studios to independent developers, enabling a diversity of video games to benefit from the visual improvements offered by this PBR technology. And as you might expect, 
the introduction of PBR support in these engines kind of facilitated the shift in how developers approached creating video games, and everybody was aware of it, because we have seen new tools, new techniques, and new implementations when it comes to creating materials in video games, because it became way easier and way better, so nobody had a choice. With tools and shaders optimized for BBR, 3D artists could focus more on the artistic aspects of material creation and lighting, especially having a confidence and knowledge that the engine's rendering algorithms would ensure consistency and realism that goes across different lighting conditions. And the interesting is that this happened just around the time when we were experiencing the new generation of video games. As a consequence, the level of support also encouraged experimentation and innovation because you want to be stuck in the past and left behind. But render engines such as Unity and Unreal were not the only software that got their hands on the PBR technology. One of the most significant indicators of this shift was the integration of PBR workflows into major 3D software such as Max, Maya, Blender, Cinema 4D, and so on. They introduced updates and enhance their support for PBR. But I think the major player in 3D that relies on PBR technology is software such as Substance Painter and the Substance Suite in general, before it was acquired by Adobe, and specifically Substance Painter and Substance Designer. If you don't know, those tools are actually dedicated to the creation and the manipulation of PBR materials, offering you as a 3D artist a legit and comprehensive set of features or designing materials that react realistically to changes in lighting and the environment. The Substance Suite quickly became a standard among game developers and VFX artists, which was praised for once for its intuitive interface and the quality of results it could produce, which is the most important as far as I can tell. This, in addition to its amazing ability to paint directly onto 3D models in Substance Painter, and what you get from this, is seen real-time feedback under various lighting conditions, which helps to create something that looks realistic and saves you a lot of time and effort. So as you can see, what Pixar did with its paper had a lot of ripple effects over the industry when it comes to game development, VFX, ArcViz, and any other field that requires using materials and textures. But as I said before, the theory was there for decades, and what Pixar did just offer a practical use of this technology, which was really, really great as far as I can tell. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.